Western North Carolina devastation. Dear Ascending Family, Many of you may know that Thomas and I reside in central North Carolina. As the result of the weather warfare of Hurricane Helene, there have been multiple coordinated events that have wielded significant death and destruction against the inhabitants of the western regions near Asheville that spans into the local lakes and several mountain cities. We are blessed and grateful that in our area there has been no significant flood damage. However, only a few hours away from us, there are hurricane survivors that are still stranded within extremely dire situations without acknowledgement of any government aid or relief coming to help them. Essentially at this stage, they have been left to die by the state government, as only local residents are left to pick up the pieces and do their best to help their neighbors. In the current terrain, it is difficult to get confirmation of many of the details being reported by alternative media and citizen journalists in order to assess what is accurate or not in which to comprehend the severity of this situation. Unfortunately, as we suspected, the information warfare continues on as the mainstream media are not reporting the facts, and are actively hiding many of the atrocities, as well as the death toll. In our opinion, the legacy media are purposely under-reporting the catastrophic impacts while announcing it's all under control, assuring that local, state and federal government are making commensurate efforts to deploy desperately needed disaster relief to multiple thousands, and helping those stranded without road access. Yet the locals in the region report the exact opposite. Many are stating that the government officials assigned into local areas are hoarding or taking disaster supplies away while blocking rescue efforts being organized by the locals or concerned citizens coming from other states that are struggling to get the much-needed supplies into the regions impacted. We prayed to know how we could offer our help, knowing that most of the government entities, and global conglomerates of humanitarian storefronts are just money laundering and human trafficking operations. We know there are many people who want to help but no longer trust the approved channels and don't know who to trust. We prayed to know the best way we could get support to those who most need it right now. Our prayers were answered today when an energetic synthesis member living outside of Asheville for the last 13 years contacted us through email when her cell phone and electric power was finally restored. Nadine has confirmed with us that the situation is beyond dire, roads and city infrastructure are gone, bodies are being pulled out by the hundreds from the rivers but there's no official count for them. People are absolutely traumatized by the amount of destruction and death surrounding them, while no one comes to help claim them. The roads have been washed away and the only way to reach most of the areas is by helicopter, mule or hiking. Some, such as those medically trained are getting through with motorized all-terrain vehicles to assist with special medical needs or those with disabilities. There was the destruction of a plastics factory which has polluted not just the rivers, but the wells close to the rivers also. This has exacerbated the need for drinking water. Some of the volunteers clearing the debris are showing chemical burns from being in the polluted water. To compound all of this, as these regions have no power, at night there are gangs of looters roaming these areas without rule of law. Nadine and her family, husband Michael and two sons, are extremely grateful their home was spared, and have been active all week locating, helping, and feeding their neighbors organizing needed supplies and have realized that they need much more help in order to reach all those near them. There is a civilian effort coordinating through some churches and fire departments deep in the area to get people the most basic supplies they need and keep them safe as best as possible. What is loud and clear is that the government and big charitable corporations are not helping those in need here in North Carolina. We have the privilege of knowing that there are like-minded people from our community on the ground in the midst of the hardest-hit region with incredible integrity and strength to do what's right, not only helping others, but also utilizing Christos shielding and prayers for connecting with the land and water spirits, who have relayed the truth to us of what is really going on from first-hand experience.
Nadine mentioned her concerns that cold weather and winter is coming. These mountains are facing at least three to six months without power. Many will need basic tools and camping gear, such as cooktop stoves, heaters, blankets, water filtration systems and thermal underwear. However dear a situation is now, it will get worse without proper help now. We are aware that many people are financially stretched and things are difficult. Please know there is no expectation, but we hope those that can help know that we believe this to be the most trustworthy donation source we can give to, if we were planning to do so. They've set up a donation site here, spot.fund web link. We would really appreciate it if you could help spread the word about their truly noble and worthy effort, if you have friends or family that have the resources to help. Thank you for your loving care, prayers and support. Many GSF Blessings Lisa and Thomas Our GSF Blessings are directed to the earth and her sacred springs and waters.